Free dubs. All right, let's take a look at Reshi's art. Now, is there any updates to Reshi that you guys think we should make since Robin's international championship winning list? I mean, list is pretty good. Good deck. I think it's relevant. You know, just give it a shot. The deck is definitely just, you know, one of the best decks in format. Still, even if you don't like it, even if you're not a big uh, Welder deck fan, I'm certainly not the biggest Welder deck fan. But, deck's good. Uh, you gotta give it that. Man, I am totally blind. Uh, another cool thing. So, Natalie also got me, she got me some busted video games for Christmas, so that was really cool. Uh, she got me Luigi's Mansion, which I was playing a lot last night. But then, also, uh, she got me Donkey Kong 64. I love that game. Oh, my gosh. Donkey Kong 64. I haven't played it since I was a kid, but, man, that game holds up. It is really fun, really cool. I mean, I've loved the Donkey Kong series, and I've, I've replayed, like, the I've replayed the Donkey Kong games for Super Nintendo a bunch, like Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. I've also played like all the Tropical Freeze, like all of that, the, like the new the new age Donkey Kong, you know, platformer games are really good. But I wish they'd make another game like Donkey Kong 64, like, you know, with like an immersive world. The, I mean, the story is great. There's voice acting. I mean... The game is just so cool. Uh, you know, and I'm going to feel like a boomer saying this, but they don't, you know, they just don't really make games like that. I mean, especially they don't make Donkey Kong games like that anymore. It's the only one that I feel like they've ever done. Yeah, it is. It's the only only Donkey Kong game like that they've ever done. So there's something really cool about it. Oh, Jeremy. Hating on the, uh, the Reshi deck. Why hate? I mean, it's good. Good deck. Let's see, we're playing against Malamar. I feel like I never play against Malamar anymore. But the one time I'm playing a deck that doesn't have, like, any healing. We're like, oh, yeah, there he is. Malamar, great. So we do have Welder Double Fire turn one, though, and that's good. And I can Verdian for a fire... And then Hearth for two more, which is really cool. I actually just have a ton right here. So, I mean, yeah, we're going to Cherish Ball probably for Young Heatran. Well, considering he's the only one we can grab because our Reshi is in the prizes. That's fine. And then I kind of like my switches. And we're just going to welder first. See what we get. Gonna throw those there. We've got a lot of switches. I feel like it's correct to counter their stadium. I can honestly get rid of that for a couple more fires. And then switch. And we're going to give him the steamy stomp, guys. Yo, Jonathan, what's up? Goin says, Castlevania was one of the best games ever made for the PS1. Played the game so much, the disc broke. Uh, Haber says, if I buy Draw Me a Pokemon with Tricky Points, can I choose any card? Uh, you choose any Pokemon and I'll draw it. Yes. So, uh, but I draw it from memory. That's what makes it fun. Is I'm not, you know, no leaks. I don't look at any, uh, any help when I draw the Pokemon. So they're going to end up looking very, uh, very interesting, I would say. All right, it does appear as if there is an Ultra Necrozma in this version of the deck. I wonder if they got the switch. Oh, of course they did. There we go. Turn to attack with Atina. Oh, boy. 
<clears throat> I could take a knockout um, with Turtonator next turn. It's kind of interesting. I don't think it really matters. I and mean, I might as well just kind of keep it pushing with Heatran. Uh, you know, pivoting to the Turtonator. Like, well, what does it matter? So we're going to trade that for two more fire. Welder to the Turtonator. And then we need to we need to find Vulpix. That's for sure. So I don't really take any more of these spell tags. So yeah, we were not able to find Vulpix. Bummer. But I do have a bunch of energy to attach, so that's fine. And we're just going to give it the old steamy stomp again. Caldwell says Sonic and Mega Man was their favorites. <laughs> Jeremy says steamy stomp into a big old forest dump. Yes, yeah, Beazle Bozo's got a city slicker. Yeah, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll kick flip right over there. I got my board right here. At the board right here. Ugh. Yes. Now, the only thing is that I cannot, uh, I can't bust a kick flip during the, uh, the streams. Like the, during, not, I mean, yes, I can during this stream, but during the, uh, the tournament streams. During the tournament streams, the kick flip cannot be redeemed. But during the uh, PTCGO streams, oh yeah, I just wait till the game is done, and then uh, I actually I love a nice movement break. So I I've been thinking about making it less points. Just kidding, I'm not gonna make it less. But uh, I love a movement break. It's nice to get up and move around during the stream, you know. Spanish Falcon, Donkey Kong Country Three was the first game you ever played. That's amazing. I think Sonic the Hedgehog was probably one of my first games ever. When I lived in Japan, um, my parents got me. I went to like an international school. When I lived in Japan, I lived in Japan for three years growing up. Uh, a lot of you guys probably know that because I talk about it sometimes. But I lived there. My dad was stationed there in the Navy. So I was there for three years. And I went to an international school. And it was like an hour bus ride uh, both ways. And I was very young. I was probably yeah, kindergarten and first grade. So my parents got me a Game Gear to, you know, help with the with the long bus ride. And I used to just play Sonic on the Game Gear all day, every day. Okay, so we got a Reshi and we got the Vulpix. So this is exactly what we needed to really kind of start to get this game going again. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to end up weldering onto the Reshi. That's fine. Good giant Hearth. The way, honestly, our giant hearth is probably fine. Yeah, two more fires. Yeah, we'll welder. Cool. And there's no spell tag. Love that. We do have Jirachi. It's good. And then I don't feel like I'm getting reset stamped. So, like, I don't even know if there's a point in attaching that fire there. I mean, yeah, there is. It's fine. Um, and a little explosive jet. And I still, I've been very adamant about saving my switches. So that's great. I, you know, I'm going to be able to pivot out of this Turtonator if it doesn't get knocked out. Wildfire says, my first game was Hill Climb Racing on my dad's phone. That's sick, Wildfire. Nice. I did not play my first phone game until I was 22 years old. Yep. I believe. Something like that. Unless there might have been, like, I might have had Centipede or something on my NV3 when I was 20. I did have an NV3 for the longest time. Now, what's up, Blue-Eyed Kitten? Grammar time, I did not have a nickname in Japan. No, I was just Andrew. Creeping Fruit, I can't really speak any Japanese. I know, like... Uh, 
let's see. I know, Chaktamate Kudasai. I know, just a moment, please, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that. And I know when you answer the phone, you say Mushi Mushi. That's about it. And I know how to count to 10. I know there's like Ichi, Ni, San, Shi, Go, Oku, Ichi, Achi, Q, Shu, something like that. One through 10. I mean, I was in kindergarten and first grade when I was there. So like those were the two, yeah. And then we moved back here for second, when I was going into second grade. <laughs> Dave Cook says, I had snake on my Motorola Razor. Changed your life. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's hilarious. So let's see what they got. Uh, they could attack with Blacephalon and snipe this turn. That would actually be very troubling because my Vulpix would go down, and I'm not really looking forward to that. And they have a spell tag on their thing. So it's kind of annoying. Yeah, I really would prefer it if my Vulpix lived. Oh! This is Edwin, guys. Uh, I'm just now, I never look at, <laughs> I literally never look at the uh, the username when I'm playing people, but cheers, this is Edwin. Yeah, so I'm playing against Girlcot uh, from the chat. So cheers, Edwin. Good luck. Hopefully also you are having fun, Edwin. That's awesome. I play against Edwin literally all the time on PTCGO, so very funny. Usually I notice much sooner than this. But there is no mistaking Edwin's um, Pikachu outfit on the Avatar. So yes, it looks like uh, they are on their three price turn. So Vulpix going down. Probably also Jirachi if I had to guess. Which seems fine. So if they take out those two... Hmm... Then I go to two prizes remaining. And we don't play any reset stamp. Hmm. Because we can explosive jet again, you know, and just knock out this active. They'll put all the damage on my Charizard. And then, so long as Edwin has a way to finish off my Charizard at the end of the game, which Edwin probably will. Yeah, because I don't have a way to gust around this thing. So we have to go... And we have to let the Turtonator get knocked out. And since I don't play Reset Stamp, it's just going to be a matter of whether or not Edwin can just make it happen. Which just seems disastrous. I mean, that just seems so horrible. It's like the last thing you want to do is leave a game up to that. Like... You got it or not? I can't put a ditto down because it'll get instant KO'd by the spell tag. I can't put a Jirachi down. It's an easy KO. The low puff? I guess. Low puff. So we're going to pal pad two welders back into the deck. And then I kind of have to welder to the Turtonator and hope I find a third energy. Oh my gosh, three energies to knock out that Blacephalon. What a pain. Yeah, I mean, that's just what we have to do. And then if I miss the energy, then... Okay, we got the energy. So I can Explosive Jet. I guess. That seems so bad, but... We gotta keep that thing in the active. And then, you know, Edwin's gonna put the damage there. And we know that Edwin plays Great Catcher. And we know that Edwin plays Ultra Necrozma. So, yeah, it would not be very difficult for Edwin to just bring up my Reshi and KO it. So that is 
you know, as much as, I mean, we got Welder every single turn this game. We've Weldered every single turn. It's just like the Reshi deck doesn't have a lot of other options, you know? It's like we've got one thing we're trying to do, and if we, like, just don't do it that well, then we kind of get run off the table. And there's not really a lot of comeback potential for the deck. We don't have Reset Stamp in the list. Yeah. We don't have any form of Gust outside of Nine Tails. So, kind of tough. I'm assuming that, you know, since Edwin's got Jirachi and pretty decent hand size, the potential for three Malamars in play, I'm thinking that Edwin is going to be able to find what he needs to bring up my Reshi and KO it. If not this turn, then next turn for sure. My hope is that this Turtonator just gets knocked out and then Reshi, you know, Reshi just takes a knockout and then can finish off for game somehow. I've got this low punny. I mean, I guess I could potentially Puffy Smashers GX. Nah, I think I might be out of energy to do that. I've got 11, 12, 13, 14. There is four energies at large in my deck. So, yeah, we cannot Puffy Smashers. There's the Great Catcher. No, Chad, no. <laughs> there she is. Bad. Literally, I'm in a I'm locked in a space where all I can do is just attack with Charizard twice and hope that Edwin can't win. So we'll see if Edwin decides to gust this turn and hit into the Reshi. I think that's probably what Edwin's trying to do. I don't think that I have a way out of that. Like, if Edwin softens up the Reshi this turn, if I can pivot to another attacker, like, if I could pivot to Victini, I guess, or something like that. But I would have to top deck the Victini. I can't use the low puff. I mean, Edwin doesn't have any GXs on the field, so there's no help there. Just, like, really locked into this play. Which is real rough. So let's see. I'm sure Edwin's got this one. I'm sure. Sure of it. There's Ultra across one. Wow. But I cannot bring it up. So Edwin is going to sure up this game by attaching the Psychic there. The Viridian's there. I can't attack with a non-GX. And Edwin's going to have more than enough energy to knock out... Okay, um, I think maybe my only shot is to go in, because I know that Edwin already has the Great Catcher in hand as well. So I think potentially my only outs are to... My only outs might be to try and stall with Vulpix or Megalopony and Jigglypuff. So I, and then like I have to try and set this up, like set up the Nine Tails. And if I stall with Megalopony, two switches in the discard pile. It's probably all the switches that he plays. So I think we have to go here. GX, put him to sleep. And then hope to find my other energies and set up nine tails. 
and then I have to gust up the Ultra Necrozma and Flare Strike it for game. I think there is like just enough energy in my deck to be able to do that. He could GX. Yeah, I have to hope that he doesn't have like a way out of the sleep though. I know he can use the GX, but like I'd have to hope that just like he stays asleep. So. And then he doesn't have a switch. I think that's all I got. Yeah, I have to try and puffy it, guys. I don't really have any other play. That is it. Because if I if I hit into the Giratina, I lose. So that's our that's our only line. So we're gonna try and go there. And I think there is like just, yeah. He's asleep. He's asleep. Oh, he's asleep. Okay. <laughs> the Giratina. Oh, he's sleeping. <laughs> he's sleeping. Let's go, chat. No, the third switch. No. <laughs> The third switch. Oh my gosh. The third switch, Edwin. You play a third switch? It was still relevant, though, because Edwin had to use the the switch and can't retreat the, you know, because then Edwin wouldn't have been able to retreat the psychics, but now Edwin has too many energy located in other places. No, I, I think he I think I might still have it. Because he he doesn't this energy is stuck on the Giratina. You see what I'm saying, chat? He can't get it off. And almost all of his energy is accounted for. Like he's got a psychic here, a psychic here, so he's got one, two, three, four, five. The Dedenne would do it if he can KO the Dedenne. Oh, and he's got a psychic in hand. Oh my gosh. And he just has to find the, what, the metal energy? And that's game? So, I mean, he can Viridian for the metal energy. But I don't know. Tough. But maybe he only plays one metal. I mean, I don't know why he benched the Ultra Necrozma. If he didn't have another metal, can't he just Viridian for the metal? But he's playing like he ain't got it, so. All right, chat, let's go. Insane game. All right, somehow he ain't got it. I don't, I'm gonna, we're gonna have to ask Edwin after this, but somehow Edwin did not win there. So we have to bring up the Ultra Necrozma. Let's take a look in the deck. I have Cherish Ball. So we've got to Dene. And there's two more fires left in the deck. That means I have to find the one more fire. There's a Fiery Flint in my deck as well. So I think it's technically correct to do this now. And then we have to find our one more. So we're gonna nine temptations up. Oh no, yeah, I've, I've used my GX, so I do need to find the last fire energy. In 11 cards. Switch, day day change. Let's go chat. Flare strike for game. Well played Edwin. Well played. Oh my gosh, what a crazy game. That was a that was a good one, Edwin. That was a good one. Super close. Oh my gosh. Yes. So uh Ah, uh, yes, Edwin says I needed to get that last medal from killing the turtle. 
Got it. Because I was wondering, I was like, if you didn't have the medal, why were why did the Ultra Necrozma go down? It was prized, but it ended up being last prized. I got it now. Okay. So that, uh, I didn't have that information though, obviously. So I had to try and sleep the, the Giratina and get that turn where I built up the Ninetales and the Ninetales ended up getting us there. But really well played, Edwin.